What's up guys, Chaos here, bringing you guys another video. Today I bring you guys a Rex gameplay. Uh, I know I haven't brought a ton of that to you this year, but we're, we're gonna start some money games, we're gonna start some tournaments, uh, start getting some more Rex gameplay. Salary cap and mud is kinda getting old, everybody's 99 speed, all that. I'm gonna still play it, but definitely gonna mix in some Rex. I think it's fun, it's a good mix up, the guys are slower. It makes you have to be better with your user, which you're gonna see in this gameplay that I screw up a little bit, just cause I've had a crutch of 99 speed and I'm, I'm getting down to like 90 speed now, so I'm having to be more on point and it just it makes you think more with your adjustments 99 man 99 uh speed you just man someone up they're gonna get back probably so i hope this is gonna be helpful for you guys i had fun playing i'm gonna play a lot more regs uh without further ado man if you guys could just drop a like for me uh you guys have been doing really good with the like button i've got a great ratio going i really appreciate you for that if you're new make sure you hit the sub button and maybe even become notification gang man make sure you guys don't miss a video but without further ado let's jump into this video man all right, boys, let's get into this, man. You guys see in the top right-hand corner, we're playing my guy, Sodak Jack. Very good player, man. He grinded LCQ, he grinded leaderboards. He did a good job this year. Very, very good player. He never had the best team, but when you catch him in regs, he's going to be able to compete with you because you're going to have an even team. So you see he's in the trips tight end. He runs the trips tight end. He does a good job of it. Right here, he runs the ball, has a good run, but man, oh, man. We rocked the <laughs> we rocked the crap out of on that guys. A uh, little bit of fluke, fumble's always a little fluky, but we'll take it. Right there, we run a little verticals. Just take my free yards, man. In, in regs, it's a lot different just because they can't man up the whole team. When you're in re uh, mutt, 99 man, you can just man the whole team. Right there, I had a touchdown, I just couldn't get away uh, to throw it, but that's another thing with, with regs. You don't have a 99 speed Vic, so it just makes, all the difference in the world when you are playing when you're playing mutt and you go to regs and you just have so much less speed and you're gonna see it throughout this game uh, from both sides of the ball just the variating speed levels it helps you to be more precise with your adjustments so I have to almost know what route combo is coming more so than I do in mutt I think personally but that's just my honest opinion now there is the flip side to it where I don't have three ag receivers that I can just throw high balls to and go catch so there is that but the end of the day i think it's a little bit easier to play uh, offense but that's just me personally that also has to do with not having route cams uh, when you have route cams in in bunch you almost need them whereas when you go to when you go to trip side and you don't need them so and that helps you as well in regs right there we had a little bait if you want to rewind it i did he had the s post coming across the middle and the crosser i did a little bit of a quick little bait just like a half hitch back and when I did that, he thought I was pulling back to the S post and he threw the crosser. And me personally, I'm never leaving that crosser. When I play when I play uh, against trip side end, I, I see shot post, I'm fake going back to the S post. I'm never going back because they're gonna sit there and wait for you to go back. They're never gonna throw that S post half the time, like half the time, just because you're waiting, you're waiting for them to come back, waiting for them to come back, and they never come back and it's too late to throw. So take a look at that if you guys want to. I thought it was a really good user play. Got him into throwing it, and it caused an, an, a big possession for us right there. Right here, huge fourth and six, and he just couldn't get there. And as you guys can see, if he had a 99 speed user right there, I'm boxed. He just mistimed it a little bit, couldn't get out there, and we're able to move the chains. Next play here, we hit our way around to Devontae Freeman. Almost get a little bit sticky, but we'll take our first down. Really looking for a touchdown here since we're already up two stops. If I go up 10-0, that would be great. But it's almost a demoralizer to go up 6-0 after getting two stops. It's almost like you didn't even really get the full stop. So it kind of sucks. But we're going to try to get 7 here. If we don't, we're okay with 3. It's just not what we wanted. Uh, right here, we're going we're gonna to miss our read, to be honest with you. I had my out route. Not sure why I threw my zig. That was a cloud flat, and it played really well. However, if I hit my out route on the opposite side, I'd probably pick up about 10, and I'm in a 3rd and 6 situation. Instead, I'm on a 3rd and 21. And we almost fit in that crosser, but just couldn't do it. Settle for three. Not the end of the world, like I said. However, it's not what you want. When you get two stops, you want to be up two possessions. So you at least want to get a touchdown on one of them. I had to settle for three both times. Now if he gets a touchdown, he's already back in the lead and in control of the game. So this is an important possession. If we, we want to really get a stop, and we don't want to get him at least anything easy. We want to make him work. So him breaking that run right there, I don't want to let him break another run like that again. I want to make him at least have to just dink and dunk, take his five yard passes, take his six yard passes, take a seven. Right there, nice little laser. I almost got back to it, but just couldn't get there in time. Not the end of the world. 
big play uh big big play here or big area right here i don't want to give up seven so now that i have him kind of in the red zone at the 24 yard line i really don't want to give him anything i'm cool with him dinking and dunking like the whole time i'm cool with him dinking and dunking i don't want to give him anything because it's hard to score down here especially without that without the eggs without the without the 99 spec 99 speed guys it's hard to score down here and as you can see he throws a high ball to his tight end that's a catch with shannon sharp that's a catch with vernon davis that's a catch with jeremy shockey but it's not a catch with hooper it pops up in the air we get ourselves a pick now i'm gonna consider that a bit lucky i mean it's a good animation for him to drop it it's a good animation for it to pop up in a spot where i can catch it i'm not gonna act like oh pure skill pure skill no i'm not gonna say that it was lucky however this isn't much so when you highball to these guys it is not an automatic catch the way it is in salary cap and much so keep that in mind when you're playing that that might happen if you try to highball right here we hit our drag across the middle do a couple steer spins you know just just moving the chains I made for 12. I'm playing well on offense. I'm happy with the way I've played. It's just, it sucks that I haven't gotten any sevens out of my drives and my stops. Uh, that's always unfortunate. But we have three stops. It's our ball at half. So if we can make this the last drive of the half and even be up 9-0, I'm cool with the field goal this time simply because if this is the last drive of the half, we'll be up 9-0 at halftime and the game, will, the game will be in my complete control. Now that was unfortunate for him. The same pop-up that I got and got a pick on, he gets a pop-up on, and nothing happens for him. He gets a, just a bat down, and on third and eight, we throw a laser. That's a tough break for him. I'm going to say that, that that was lucky in my favor, simply because I got a pick the same way just a couple plays before. But we're doing well on offense. Right now, I'm noticing a lot that he is keeping his cloud on the left side, on the trip side. He's keeping a cloud most of the time. That's something I've noted right now, but I'm saving for the second half. This is about the time when I noted on this third drive, I noticed I don't think I saw him deep quarter out there one time. So noting that on the trip side, he doesn't have a deep quarter. I'll tell you guys when I take advantage of it later on, but that's something that I noted. So just keep that in mind. Right here, I don't have Michael Vick, as you can see. I'm running around like I had Michael Vick back there. If that's Michael Vick, that's probably a first down, but I have Matt Ryan. So I end up just getting like a no gain sack, but not the end of the world i'm not going to trip on that we we got three so we're up two possessions now i just got to make sure that i get a stop right there i clicked on it the last second too late i was trying to click onto that flat to drag him back to not give him that free chunk but i should have done it earlier that's my fault that's just me not being very good at that you see a lot of pro players if they see if the guy's rolling out that they're about to get a nice playmaker up dot go ahead and click onto that guy and drag him back and make him just run with the quarterback and kind of keep him underneath you that's something that you can always do i tried to pull it off there not skilled enough or just not quick enough but uh end of the day he only picked up about 20 so it's better than it could have been I, I presume but a little bit unlucky right there huge sack right there big time play that puts him in a really bad position but you know what he picked up on something right there and he goes to x spot and he picks up a huge laser he picked up on something to play before that's something that he noticed i had a cloud outside i didn't baseline so it dragged in with the motion and when he hiked it, my guy got pulled all the way in, so it beat the cloud to the outside. That's something that he was able to notice, and it was smart of him to go right back to it and pick up a dot, and it got him seven points that he needed. Because if I get a stop right there, this game's cooked, like full out cooked, over with. Now right there, it looked like he played hard flats, but for some reason, my tight end got literally stuck at the line. I ended up being able to hit the corner out anyways, and it might have paid off for me and given me even more yards than I would have gotten, but oh well right there you guys saw it so i told you that i was seeing that he was keeping a cloud on the trip side i took advantage with a little bit of a glitch using a smoke screen on the outside and i was able to pick up a huge chunk and get myself into a guaranteed field goal range spot with a chance at a touchdown so big play right there to be able to create that for myself i'm in the red zone now if we can get seven this game's over with literally like because it's my ball i have and we'll be in a great position so second and six here we go to julio we have one shot at the end zone and that's why you get yourself a Julio. I stood up. I'm hyped. I'm super hyped, actually, because this is a money game. Julio makes plays, man. And right there with nine seconds left, I have no timeouts. I have to go to the end zone. I'm going to give my best receiver a chance to make a play. And that's exactly what he did for me. He got a touchdown. And we get to keep it moving. So now it's our ball out of halftime. Our only chance to win, like, shoot, lose right here is if we turn the ball over. So I'm thinking to myself, safe plays, move chains take what the defense gives me i'm not gonna force anything 
I'm gonna make good reads and I'm just gonna try to try to make sure that I don't blow this lead that I already have. Right here, nothing's really open, throw the ball away. Like I said, that's not a problem. In this game, you don't wanna force anything if you don't have to. And uh, I'm not, I'm throwing the ball away if nothing's open. I'm taking the underneath stuff if it's right there. I'm not waiting on deep routes. I know I'm up two possessions with ball. All I need to do is get, uh, get points. And right there, we throw a nice little laser X spot. I noticed that I didn't have enough space to smart route in, which is why I put the curl there. And I knew the curl would hold the user a little bit, which is why I did that. So that's what that, that's what that route combo was. I know it looked a little cluttered over there, but I knew exactly what I was thinking. Just continue to move the chains, continue to move the chains, uh, and you'll be good to go. Third and 13 here. Now, I do something really dumb right here, I believe, because no, it's, it might be the next play. It's third and 13. I'm up nine. I should be cool with three. Okay, uh, that was the play. That was the play. I should have been cool with three on that third and 13. And I risked a sack in order to try to get seven when I didn't need it. Third and 13 right there. Either do a play do a play where you can get some short spin and spin, maybe, maybe, maybe make someone miss to get a first down. Or just run the ball. Like, I didn't need seven right there. It was pretty stupid for me to risk getting out of field goal range on a sack for being greedy. So, I disagree with my play call there. We end up getting the three anyways. It doesn't hurt us. But just a little bit of a mistake I made right there. Just letting you guys know what I think I could have done better in that situation. Third and seven right here. He definitely shouldn't have spun. He had a first down. Maybe more right there. But he spins back into my user. Puts him on a fourth and three. Which is going to make this a huge, huge down for him. If I, if he doesn't get this, the game's pretty much over. And uh, and we're playing. We played perfect defense. But... He gets his comeback late. I call it perfect defense just because comebacks take so long to get open. And he gets really unlucky, guys. I got a perfect click on his stick, which you will not always get. And he gets a little bit unlucky. More than a little bit. And we turn him over on downs. Now, I did tell you guys. I mean, I didn't tell you this. But I wouldn't put this game in if if it wasn't going to get close. So I'm not going to tell you all what I do. But I wouldn't give you guys a game that was a straight blowout. So... Just keep that in mind. I take my smoke screen right there, move the chains, good animation on that. Sometimes with a smoke screen, you'll throw it and it just won't move. And right there, you got a good one. You got a good animation to move up field, but I do something really stupid, guys. Another, like I told you guys, I almost cost myself three before. I cost myself three again, minimum. Why am I forcing that in there? I didn't think he was gonna be able to get there. It was regs, users are slower. So I really didn't think he would be able to get there, but honestly, like, that was so dumb. I don't have to force anything. What I told you guys at the beginning of the half was, take your underneath stuff, don't force anything, you'll be good to go. I have a drag wide open underneath. I decide to wait on it, wait on it, wait on it, throw a corner out, and he gets a user pick. So instead of ending the game like 100%, I let him back in it because this is regs and we're playing five minute quarters. So he's gonna have some time. The clock stops the whole quarter if, you get, if people get out of bounds. And he's got all those timeouts. So I put myself in a really bad position that I don't want to be in, that I didn't have to be in. So all good. We made a mistake. Now we have to bounce back, try to get a stop here. I'm sending a lot of pressure at him. I just, what I'm trying to do is just make him throw quick passes, make him take his time, make him take a long drive. I don't want to give him 40, 50 yards in a chunk at a time to let him score quickly. Simply because if you let someone score quickly, that gives them even more time because they have to get another stop. So they're down two possessions. He need, he knows he needs to score quickly. If you make him work, he might get impatient. He might make a bad read. That's just something that you have to note when playing with, with players like that. Now, right there, I actually had two hard flats. He didn't let me adjust to my cloud flat late, but it didn't end up hurting me right there. We're just trying to we're just trying to make it tough on him. Like I said, if he ends up getting seven, it's not the end of the world. We just want to make him work. Right there, I was a millisecond away from lurking that. So close. Like I said. The 99 speed user was a crutch. I have to be closer to that on regs. Right there though, we're able to shoot the gap and blow it up. So that's really good. Keep making them work. Like I said, just keep that clock moving. Keep making them work. Maybe he'll make a mistake. And there you go. That's a mistake right there. And we're gonna fall down. We're up two possessions. We're gonna clock out. That's gonna do it, boys. This is my guy, Soda Jack. Good friend of mine. Actually a really good player. I actually probably played one of my better games and things really went my way. The turnover uh, in the red zone before half on his high ball was unfortunate for him, as well as maybe a couple picks that I could have had uh, that just got batted down. So, ended up the scoreboard being a little bit more range than it could have been. 
But great game for you guys to learn from. I know I learned something. I hope you guys did too. If you did, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what I can do better. Hope you guys enjoyed. Take it easy. Peace.